Hello everybody, welcome to the Sunday night service in the garage. This is the Edge of Eternity and my name is Bill Cameron. I want to welcome you to the service this evening and to the uh, different things that we're going to talk about. I want to start out with a couple of uh, notes here. I have down here on my uh, board three people I want to kind of shout out to tonight. Uh, first one is Bryce over at Project Frankenstein. Got his new sticker here. It's very cool. If you didn't see his episode this weekend, check it out. It'll make you uh, crazy. It was really good and a little bit uh, kept you on edge. Uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. Bryce, keep up the good work, man. I'm not going to say anything else. You have to watch it for yourself. Next one, uh, uh, Mike over at Desert Rat 2000. Uh, he had a, a few episodes this past week on a project that he did for his company that were really, really great. And I mean, he put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into this work and uh, check it out and see what you think. I thought it was just absolutely great. Um, and then I've got uh, Mr. Bullet here at BCCOA. I got to get one of his stickers. I got to send you one of them too, Mr. Bullet, one of mine. But um, he is uh, building a couple cars for the No Name Nationals right now. One is a, uh, calls it Old Big. Uh, it's a Charger, and he's also building a Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo was for his dad, and his dad passed this week. Um, I believe his dad knew the Lord, and I just want to ask you to say a uh, prayer for Mr. Bullet over at uh, BCCOA and his whole family. Uh, as I'm sure he takes care of his mom and dad. Uh, now his dad's gone, he's still be caretaking for his mom and he has his own house and he has his own things that he has to care for. Uh, he's an amazing worker. Y you just gotta watch him if you haven't had the opportunity to see him. I'm sure most of you probably have already, but please keep him in your prayers. Um, coincidentally or not, Tonight, we're going to be talking about the topic of prayer. Let's get into it. Hey, I want to say real quick, thanks to all of you who were checking on me this week. I have been sick. Uh, today is my first day out of the house in, in about four or five days. And I uh, had a really bad stomach flu, and my diet has been water for the last four days. Anything else reveal, reveals a terrible result. And so I've been watching it, um, but I appreciate your prayers. Now we're talking about prayer uh, tonight, and I entitled this uh, Talking to God. But I first asked the question up here, prayer, do you? Why do we pray? What is the purpose of prayer? Now, I think we all kind of know, but sometimes we go along and we feel like our prayers aren't being answered. And I want to tell you the story of a man in the Old Testament whose name was Ezra. Okay? Ezra was a true man of God. Let me just tell you a little bit about him. This psalm, by the way, we're going to be looking at Psalm 119, was written by Ezra. Um, and I think you'll find it very fulfilling. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. It has 176 verses. And the thing that's so unique about it is every single verse, every single one of these 176 verses say something about the Bible, something about God's word. They may call it your commands, your laws, your precepts, your statutes, your ways, uh, all those kind of terms, but every single verse is about God's Word. Now, the other interesting thing that I find about it is if you take your Bible in your hand and you crack it right in half, right down the middle, you're probably going to open to Psalm 119. It's right in the very heart of the Bible. How do these things like that verse, that, that chapter get right in the very center of the Bible? I don't know. Was it by the hand of God or just by the way men compiled the Bible and put all the books together? I don't know, but I, I find it very interesting that this longest chapter in the Bible that speaks about the Bible more than anything else is right at the heart of the Bible. Very interesting. I, I challenge you to read it. It's no more than reading a medium-sized uh, article in your Hot Rod magazine, okay? It's not like it takes forever. It's, uh, 
it is full of just wisdom and ways to understand God and what he uh, is looking for in us. So uh, with that said, um, this chapter is interspersed. 48 of the 176 verses in this chapter are Ezra saying a short prayer to God. Not going on and on, just saying a short prayer to God, asking him for his wisdom, his help, whatever it is that he has in his mind. And we're going to cover seven of those tonight out of the 48. I'm not going to read all 176 verses. I apologize, but I'd like you to read it. And you know what else I'd really like? If you'd grab your Bible right now and be prepared as we start going through some of these verses. And then you can look at them in your own Bible, maybe mark them, underline them, make a note in there. It's perfectly okay to write in your Bible. And uh, it's what I do all the time. And most people who teach Bible studies, etc., people who go to Bible studies make notes in their Bibles all the time because you can always refer back to that as something that you learned uh, to help you remember and, and uh, maybe put something into practice that you found to be a really good teaching. So there's 48 verses, 48 different verses in chapter 119 where Ezra is actually saying a short prayer to God. He might tell God something about his troubles or ask God for guidance. You'll see as we go through some of these tonight. Now, Israel had gone through a difficult time and they had kind of gotten away from God. And so God chose Ezra to come and to lead the people back to him, back to God. And there were other things that would take place, you know, in the following years with other leaders and kings coming down uh, through Israel's history. But first thing was first, and God said, I need a man who can lead these people back to me and the foundations of what I have set for them, which is the foundation of faith and believing in God. So as I look through here, um, his leadership to Israel would help them learn to rebuild their lives on the word of God, rediscovering their identity in God's promises, God's laws, and stories of God's goodness and faithfulness, which God's people should cherish and cling to. Father, I ask tonight as we go through this study that you would help us to see clearly in your Bible, in your word, the things that we ought to do in our lives to make our prayer lives stronger and more effective. I pray this in your name. Amen. So, in essence, God called Israel to do what the most important thing for the Jews was to do before all the other things was to have a relationship with God. He calls us to the same purpose. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to have one with me. There's nobody he doesn't want to have a relationship with. You know, he, he lays this opportunity out for everyone in this world and those who decide they want to accept the gift of salvation, the, this relationship with Jesus Christ, with God the Father. He gives us that opportunity and he hopes that we'll accept the gift. He did all the work. He paid for it. It's invaluable. It's priceless. He wants you to have it. Um, how do we know him? And how do we understand this salvation that can be ours? It's all through the Bible. The Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Romans, and if I was to want to totally humiliate myself, and stress you out, I would take my shirt off because I've got it tattooed right here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ezra understood this. He knew this. And this is why God called him to lead this Jewish nation, Israel, back to him. Uh, okay, so many things in the Bible I'm sorry, so many things we hear about God can sound confusing, and I understand that. I mean, some of the things are still confusing to me. I've been reading the Bible for over 50 years, and I still learn something new every, every time I read it. It's a lifelong uh, journey that we go on 
when we are getting to know God and, and learning more and more about him. So there's many things that we don't understand. Some things are confusing, but when we see these things in the Bible and we, we read them and we read them again, we continue reading them, we begin to find something is happening within us. And uh, that thing that is happening within us is God's word becoming part of us. And we've talked about his Holy Spirit here before. The Spirit of God dwells with his word. And the Spirit of God is what helps us to see that these things that we read in the Bible are true. And so this is why we as Christians cling to them. And this is why if you're not a believer, but you're listening to this station, I want you to understand that these words are true. And I want you to consider a relationship with God because it will make all the difference in every aspect of your life. Okay, so here we go. I'm not gonna read all 48 of the verses uh, that contain Ezra's prayers, but I'm gonna read a few of them to you, seven that I picked out that uh, give us a good example of what a godly person's prayer might sound like. They're not complicated. They don't have to go on and on for hours and hours. I'll give you two reasons why. If you've ever been in a church service or somewhere where the guy just keeps praying and praying and you think, man, oh man, you'll come to two conclusions. One, you'll say, I could never pray like that. Number two is, I wish he'd stop because he lost me a long time ago. I think both are true and we probably felt that way, each one of us at different times in our lives. Prayer is not something mysterious that only the highly religious people can do. Uh, prayer is a conversation with God. It's talking. We talk to him. We listen for his voice. How do we listen for his voice? You know, when we're making decisions and deciding where to go or what to do, or we're dealing with a problem and we're not sure, um, you know, how things are going to work out, we get impressions, we, we get ideas, we get thoughts, and God begins to speak to us. Uh, the more we get to know him and the more we develop this relationship with him, we can almost hear his voice speaking to us, saying, do this or do that. And it's hard to explain until you experience it. But once you experience it, it's something that you don't want to let go of. So when we talk about being people of prayer, don't think that you have to have this gift that of prayer that just sounds like um, poetry and goes on and on forever and, and it's complex and all that. The best prayers are the simple prayers. The best prayers are the ones that are the ones that move God's hand. He knows we're not trying to sound more holier than we are. We're not trying to be anything except who we are before him. Listen to how God chose to lead his people back to Israel through Ezra. Do you have your Bibles out? I hope you do. Turn right in the middle of your Bible to Psalm 119. The first verse I'm going to read to you is verse 10. And this is what Ezra says. With my whole heart, I have sought thee. And here's his simple request. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. In other words, let me not wander from the Bible. Let me not wander from the things that you've taught me. Help me to stay true to you, God. And, and he will help us do this. In the uh, New International Version, which is a little bit more modern version of the same verse, it says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. In other words, help me to remain true to the Bible and to what you would have me to do. And we'll find that he will help us. In verse 26, he says this. He ha he's asking for knowledge. Teach me knowledge and good judgment. God, give me knowledge and good judgment. I think it was last week, if not last week, the week before, I mentioned a verse in uh, James that said, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask God. He gives it to you freely without holding back. 
It's very similar to what he says here. Teach me knowledge and good judgment. I trust your commands. He is telling God, he's verbalizing in his prayer that he says, I trust you, God. And I know the things that you teach me and show me are the best for me. I trust you. And I'm going to jump all the way down to verse 100. And this is what Ezra prays. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. He's telling God, God, I seem to know more than the, even the elders know. Why? Because I've learned from your word and you've taught me, you've answered my prayers to have understanding and guidance. Now I'm going to pop back up to verse 29 where he says, keep me from deceitful ways. You know, it's easy for us, whether we're involved in the church, we're Christians, we uh, read our Bible, we, we do all the things we're supposed to do. It's still easy to fall into sin. He says, God, please keep me from deceitful ways. You know, that's part of wisdom to know that even if you're a believer, you can still be deceived by Satan and do the wrong thing. This is why we want to trust in God to help us. He says, be gracious to me and teach me your law. You know, the best way to be, not to be deceived or to do something deceitful is to know the Bible, know God's word, and then it is what gives us the wisdom and the leading of God himself through his spirit to follow according to his words. Now listen to this up in uh, verse 130. The unfolding of your words, in other words, seeing your words come to life, helping me to understand them, seeing the fullness of them gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. For myself, I'm a simple person. You know, I do good with pictures, but I do love the Bible and I read it all the time. And the Bible, through the words, gives us pictures of God and pictures of how we can live a life that would be a blessing to him. In turn, he turns and blesses us. You know, um, obedience is what gives us blessing from God. If we want God's blessing, we have to be obedient to his word. And if I could share one thing with you, it's read the Bible. Do what it says and see what happens in your life. Okay, verse number 145. I call with all my heart, answer me, Lord, and I will obey your decrees. See, Ezra, he's looking for God's help. He's looking for God's guidance. He says, Lord, I call out to you. I call out to your name. Please give me guidance. Help me. Show me the way. How do I lead these people? Maybe we say, how do I lead my family? How do I help my wife? How do I help my husband? How do I help my children? How do I do my job better? Lord, how can I be a better friend to so-and-so? It could go on and on and on. All those things we can take to God and ask him for his help. His help is perfect. All we have to do is listen to what his word says, follow the spirits leading in our lives and see what God can do. The last one I'm gonna read is in verse number 176. It's the last verse in this chapter. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Have you ever um, had to confess and say, well, I really blew it there. I really got off track. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have went there. <sighs> it leaves us feeling so defeated and, and discouraged. He asks him, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. He is asking God to come and get him. Father, come and get me. Save me from this. I'm sorry I have sinned. Pull me up out of this sin and, and uh, put your arms around me, Father, and help me to follow you and be faithful to you. I am your servant, and I want to do what you want me to do. These are the kind of things that Ezra prayed to God, and he's recorded them in this tremendous chapter in the Bible that is just full of knowledge. Um, I, I, I really want to challenge you to read it because it's 176 verses of nothing but pure help and goodness to each and every one of us.
just a couple of points here. Um, this entire message was for you to understand two things. God loves you. He wants to save you. And he wants to help you. The second thing, you can talk to God anytime you want in normal, everyday conversation. Trust me, he understands it. And the more you talk to him, the more you'll have a sense of him communing with you, living with you, helping you, and it will begin to make such a huge difference in your life. Try it. This week, try praying to God more. God, help me with this. Help me with that. See what happens. See what God will do. Now, this is how a relationship grows. Um, when you meet somebody for the first time, you know, you, it may be a friendly meeting and all that. And you may say, you know, I kind of like that guy or I kind of like that lady or whatever. And, and you say, um, I'm going to give him a call and you talk some more and you find out, hey, we both like to work on cars. And you develop this friendship around a common denominator. Maybe it's the cars. But then the friendship grows the more you talk. And you might find out more about their family or their hurts and things like that. That's how a relationship with God grows. We talk to him, we share with him. We tell him our joys, we tell him our sorrows. We ask him for help, we ask him for wisdom. We ask him to keep his eye on us and come and grab us if we get off the path that we should be on. Before you know it, you've got a friend for life. Many of you on here that I've met, I feel like I've got a friends for life. I've met many of you in person already, Many of you has just been on online on YouTube here, and uh, I really thank each one of you for being part of my life. And I pray for all those ones who are part of my uh, channel because you do mean a lot to me and your life means a lot to me. And I want you to know God in a personal way and have the same kind of relationship with him that I do. And so I want you to know that you have such great value, not only to me, but to God the Father. Uh, and he wants you to know him because he wants to bless you richly. So what do we do? We pray to God and he hears us. What happens when he hears us? Does he answer us? He always answers us. Sometimes it's the answer we want. Sometimes it's not the answer we want. Sometimes he says, wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, to wait. See, sometimes waiting is an answer. And then we see circumstances during that time of waiting that have happened and realize that was God's answer to my prayer. You know, we all experience God in exciting ways, in different ways maybe. Our lives are completely different. So we have different needs and, and desires but he understands you even greater than we understand ourselves. Um, but the first thing in this prayer that always gets answered is, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me of my sin. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross and his blood was shed to pay the price for my sinfulness. And I ask you to forgive me. And Jesus, I ask you to be my savior. I ask you to come into my life. Lord, I know that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day and had victory over death. And one day, even if I'm already in the grave, he's going to call me and I'm going to be taken up to be with him in heaven, with you, with all those who believe in you. And everyone, it's, it's as simple as really believing that prayer. It doesn't have to be word for word like that. It's acknowledging that Jesus Christ is God's son. He is the savior. He came to this world to seek and to save those who were lost. He wants to know you and he wants to bless you and he wants to give you a life that's just full of abundance and joy. Now, it starts with that relationship and it grows from there. You know, before we know God, we may not get answers the way we want them, you know, because he hears the voice of his own. 
and he answers those prayers. Now, if there's not that connection with God, it's, it's different, okay? It's different. He wants you to have that relationship with him so that he knows you and you know him. And then these um, answers to prayer and these blessings begin to come and we begin to realize who God is. So I just implore upon you to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I ask that um, you would consider these words that I've shared with you tonight and dig out your Bible and read it and see what it has to say to you as well. I'm going to close in prayer and then we'll get into this a little bit more next Sunday night. Father, thank you. I praise you that you give us the amount of time that we have here to uh, read the Bible and, and discuss it and talk about it. And Lord, I just ask that you would bless every ear who hears this. Thank you so much, Lord. I pray that um, people would rewind this tape if they've never accepted you and listen to that part where we ask Jesus Christ to become our Savior, forgiving us and allowing us to be part of your family. So Father, I thank you. Bless each one, I pray. Watch over them. I also pray for my good friend, Mr. Bullet, that at the loss of his father, Lord, you just comfort him and him and his family, Lord, in the days and weeks to come. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon. God bless you.